بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم. We greet you on this the 27th day of the blessed month of Ramadan with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, the juz for uh, today go to my book the Quran and the Moon on the 27th day uh, it begins with Surah Al-Qiyamah goes to Surah Al-Insan, Surah Al-Mursalat, uh, Surah Al-Naba and ends with Surah Al-Naziat. Now then we're speaking about the footprints of the Antichrist and our Christian brothers in particular would be very, very tremendously interested in learning what our Prophet Allah's blessing be upon him has said about the Antichrist as only a Prophet could speak. We spoke last night about the epistemological attack of the Antichrist and this is perhaps his most dangerous attack of all. And if we succumb to this attack, we would be rendered a people who would, like him, would be jasads, meaning we would be internally blind. We would not be able to ever reach Majma'ul Bahrain, the place where the two oceans meet, the ocean of knowledge externally acquired and the ocean of knowledge internally received. And these two oceans of knowledge are harmoniously integrated. This is Khidr alayhi salam. This was Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi, one of the rivers which came from Khidr alayhis. And Khidr is so much like Jesus. And from Khidr to Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi, and then so many rivers came from him, and one of them was Dr. Muhammad Iqbal. And so many rivers came from Iqbal, and one of them was my teacher of blessed memory, Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadl Rahman Ansari, Majma'ul Bahrain, the place where the two oceans meet. And now then, if we are a lucky people and we can survive his epistemological attack, we'll be able to understand and penetrate the next attack, which is also perhaps some might say this is his most dangerous attack. Why? The Prophet Allah's blessing be upon him said that the Antichrist will come with a mountain of bread and people will follow him for his bread. How does he get this bread? <laughs> the answer, he gets this bread this mountain of bread, which is what the modern West has today because of riba. The Prophet ﷺ is on Mount Arafat and he gives a farewell sermon, khutbah to the Shortly after that, the last revelation came down. We thought it was the last because Allah says, Revelation come down, came down. Today we perfected the deen. The deen was coming to us from all the way from Adam Islam to Ibrahim Islam to Abraham to Moses to Jesus. <laughs> now finally, finally, the deen has come. The one deen with Muhammad and today it is perfected. And today I have completed my favor unto you. So we thought this is the last. But no. After this khutbah to Wida, he left Mecca and returned to Yatrib, which today is called Medina. And it was there that one more revelation came down. 
Why did Allah do this? Why did he, after declaring the job is finished, why did he send one more? Except to emphasize to us, now and for all times, that here is where the greatest danger of all. The last revelation on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuah is located in Surah Al-Baqarah, I think it is one, uh, uh, what is it? It's close to the end. And uh, Allah says 184, 185, 186 perhaps. He says, بَعْدَ أُوزُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقَ اللَّهِ Oh, you who have faith in the one God, fear Allah. وَذَرُوا مَا بَقِيَ مِنَ الرِّبَا Give up, give up, give up your demand for riba. In كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِ If you are faithful. فَإِذْ لَمْ تَفَعَلُوا And if you don't do it, فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبِ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Take notice, I'm going to wage war, and my messenger, my, my prophet, will also wage war with me. And riba. The implication of this last revelation coming down on the subject of riba is because this is where the greatest danger of all is located, and this is how Dajjal gets his mountain of bread. The Prophet والسلام, cursed all four and he said they are all equally guilty. The one who takes riba, the one who gives riba, he borrows from the IMF and he has to pay as Pakistan has been doing, even under Imran Khan, and he has to pay the interest. The Prophet cursed you. The one who records the transaction and both the two witnesses and he said they are all equally guilty, equally guilty. And so it is through riba that Dajjal gets his mountain of gold, of, of bread. What is riba? When I go uh, to Britain, I hope to get a chance to speak at length on the subject. But you can't speak on length in one hour. So you still have to get parts of the subject. You have to, I have, I have delivered seminars on the subject of riba. I think the first one was in Seattle on the west coast of the United States. It must have been 22 years ago I was in Seattle. I gave the same seminar, it was an all day seminar on riba in Colombo, in Sri Lanka. I gave it in uh, Sydney in Australia. I gave it in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. I don't know where else I've given the complete one-day seminar on riba. Riba today, which delivers to the child his mountain of gold, is a subject nobody teaches anymore. It seems as though there is an incapacity in Islamic scholarship to be able to understand and penetrate the subject and also perhaps it's, they are scared of teaching the subject. And so let us make, I pray that Allah help me to make this video short. Yes, just a, a snippet of an explanation on riba. The riba in the modern world comes basically from two ways. Number one, it comes from the money. What is money? And number two, it comes from the banking system. Although the Prophet والسلام, defined riba as any transaction, not just money being lent on interest, any transaction, listen carefully, I'm going to speak slowly, any transaction, <coughs> excuse me, based on deception, which delivers an advantage, a gain, a reward, which is unjust, is riba. He says, if you, man, if you meet a man coming to the market to sell his goods, he has a truckload of durians. If you've never ate a durian, you don't know the king of all fruits. <laughs> it's in Southeast Asia. He has a truckload of durians. 
and you meet him outside of the market and you buy his truckload of durians from him. And when he goes into the market, he discovers he could have gotten a better price. The prophet said, that's riba. The price in the market was a higher price. You met him outside of the market. You concealed from him what was the market price. And you bought the truckload of durians for him by deception at a price lower than the market price. That is riba. You take your car to the garage. It's just a fuse that needs to be changed. And a fuse is probably one euro. And the garage says, this is a big job. This is going to take one week. It's going to cost you 5,000 euros. And you know nothing about the car. One week later, you go, you pay the 5,000 to collect your car. And all that the garage did was a change of fuse that was what? That cost one euro. That is riba. So this transaction based on deception is there in the monetary system. But Imran Khan's government in Pakistan and every government in Pakistan, every government in the world of Islam, from the beginning to this day, in the modern age, they don't know the subject. It is not taught in the Darul It will never be taught in the Darul never. They took gold and silver, dinar and dirham, which is in the Quran, which is money with intrinsic value. This is money in the Quran. I don't have the time to explain it to you. And they banned it. You're prohibited from using gold as money. That is in the Articles of Agreement of the International Monetary Fund. And if you make haram what Allah made halal, that is shirk. And what they did was shirk. And if we follow them and accept it, we are also in the shirk. Perhaps now you'll be able to understand the hadith located, located in Sahih Bukhari. I think it is four times that 999 out of every 1,000 will enter into the hellfire. Now you can understand there's only one way. There's only one way that the God who is kind and forgiving and merciful could send 999 out of every 1,000 into the hellfire. It's because he said, I will not forgive shirk. And they were committing shirk. So when the IMF banned the use of gold as money, they were now free to bring their bogus money into the market, money with no intrinsic value, money with, listen to the words, money with fictitious value, assigned by people, and therefore it can be manipulated. And when they want to attack you, they will cause the value of your money to fall as the money was falling in Pakistan because they didn't, they're not comfortable with Imran Khan's government. And as the value of money falls, prices will rise. You used to work for a salary and instead of paying you your salary in dinars, and now Russia is doing that, Russia's money now is being backed by gold. Instead of paying you with dinar, out there in Kimberley, <laughs> they were going for the diamond veins underneath. They were paying the Africans in paper. And when they paid you with paper, if you were good waging, getting a good wage, and after one month you could buy a camel, but then after some time, the work is the same, the sweat is the same. But after some time, the salary can no longer buy a camel. It can only buy a donkey. How do we explain that? And then later on, it can't buy a donkey anymore. It can only buy a sheep. And if you're in Indonesia later on, you can't buy a sheep anymore. You can only buy a chicken. Is there no sense in the head other than peanuts? 
to understand that this falling value of money results in a massive transfer of wealth internally within the country to a predatory elite and also a massive transfer of wealth outside like a vacuum pump that you use for vacuuming your your carpet and said this monetary system is like a vacuum pump vacuuming the wealth of africa vacuuming the wealth of the rest of the world and bringing it up into the west so that the jar could have his mountain of bread the banking system is the same but we won't take the banking system now because it's already this video is too long i want to shut and so the jar will come with a mountain of bread and when all the wealth of the world is over here everybody want a u.s visa want a british visa they want a canadian visa. they want to go and live in australia they want singapore they want brunei they want to go where the bread is located not knowing that you are looking that and it looks like a river the jazz river is not a river the jazz river is his fire and you're looking at indonesia and pakistan and bangladesh where the place is so poor miserably poor and you're saying that's the fire i would never go back to live in bangladesh i have more sense than that why would i leave new york or Los Angeles or my are you listening to me in the United States I lived there for 12 years you know why would I leave the green pastures of the United States of America to go back to Pakistan why would I do that that's the jazz that is fire down there in Pakistan the poverty is so great no you dumb dumb that fire is where the river is that's what your prophet said and it's time for you to wake up instead of following the jar for his mountain of bread it's better for you to stay away from it even if you have to eat what the pakistani and indians call dal and roti thank you wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh